I grew up with three other siblings. Um, my mother was functionally a single mother. Very early on in my childhood, um, I was introduced to you know smoking marijuana, drinking, um, sexual promiscuity. You know, at the age of 24, me and a buddy were drinking together, and he had gotten into a car accident. I was walking home, and I had quite a distance uh, to walk. And I remember just kind of like screaming at the sky. I said, if you really want me to know, you put me somewhere where I can learn about you. Christ found me on that path, and he gave me an opportunity. He presented me his gospel, and I said, yes. I don't look at it as just life-changing. I look at it as life-saving. You know, he literally saved me. I grew up, you know, around a lot of uh, gang violence, and I have a pretty um, scarred past with my mother, um, who was abusive to me and my siblings. It's given me a lot to think through and kind of fight through with God. Um, but one of the things that I'm so grateful for is where I'm at in my life. To have someone who has gone through similar things kind of walk me through how he's done it has provided me with a very, very strong foundation. You see yourself in the people that you're working with, you know, your different struggles and how people were patient with you and understanding and prayerful with you. Uh, to be able to develop a friendship with Isaac, to get to hear his story and see how God's been using him is remarkable. If someone was nervous about starting a life on life, discipleship relationship, you know, one of the things that I would ask them is, who are the people that have meant the most to you, the people that have had the biggest impact on your life? And do you desire to have that type of impact on someone else's life? I think something that, you know, I see in me and B's relationship and something that I've taken on to other discipleship roles that I have um, is really meeting people where they're at and reflecting Christ's love. We're not always going to have the right things to say. We're not always going to know what to ask. Um, but I think a really important thing is really just focusing on being there for someone, um, just being a listening ear. I want to be able to be to the point where I am actively invested in this person. It requires us to continue to immerse ourselves in the word, uh, to be prayerful for the people that God has put in front of us, and also um, just to come in at it with a humble heart. It's something that anybody can do, whether you're an introvert or extrovert. It's not based on any temperament or any test that you could take about yourself. Christ says in Matthew 28, we all should participate in this work. If the creator of the universe believes we all can do it, then we all should do it.